You're listening to the Revision Path Podcast, a weekly showcase of the world's black graphic designers, web designers, and web developers. Through in-depth interviews, you'll learn about their work, their goals, and what inspires them as creative individuals. Here's your host, Maurice Cherry. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Revision Path Podcast. we got a great interview lined up today, but let me tell you about the great folks who are really making this possible. And that's you. Yeah, that's right, you. Every time you listen to the podcast, share it, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes and Stitcher. That just gives the show that little boost that it needs to keep on going. So if you haven't done that yet and you're listening to this, uh, do us a favor and make that happen. You know, that's what really helps Revision Path grow. Well, that and our lovely sponsors, <laughs> MailChimp and Audible. Uh, MailChimp is the fastest and easiest way to make your own email newsletter. Sign up is free and it takes no time at all to get started. Uh, just head on over to MailChimp.com and sign up for a free account today. And if you get stuck, check out the MailChimp Experts directory and find someone to help you out. And of course, there's Audible. Visit audibletrial.com forward slash revision path and sign up for a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook from their library of over 150,000 titles. There's sure to be something there that you'll like, and you can listen on your iPhone, your Android, or any mobile device. We are also doing a giveaway this week. Uh, if you head on over to the Revision Path blog, you can enter to win one of two free tickets to the Generate Conference in New York City. That's going to be held by Net Magazine and Creative Block. That's on June 20th at the New World Stages. The contest ends this Friday, so don't wait around for this giveaway because it'll be gone before you know it. We're giving out tickets to two lucky participants, and one of them could be you. You'll find the link to enter in the show notes. Now on with this week's interview. I had the pleasure of talking with Joel Simmons, presentation designer for Microsoft. Here we go. All right, so tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, My name is Joel Simmons, and I'm a presentation designer. Okay, tell us just briefly about what a uh, presentation designer is. What does that mean? Presentation designer basically works in PowerPoint or Keynote or Prezi. And uh, basically, I design PowerPoints and Keynotes for uh, large companies around the Bay Area. What are some of the companies that you've done presentations for? I have done presentations for Facebook, Google, YouTube, Qualcomm, a lot of big names. I uh, worked for a... Um, an agency out in the Bay Area called Duarte Design, and they, they're basically a presentation agency, and they work with really huge names. So luckily, I kind of in that one job, I worked <laughs> for all these really big clients. So it looks pretty impressive on my resume <laughs> to have all these big names on there. And, and Duarte, that's from Nancy Duarte, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Nice, nice. Now, we've had another presentation designer on the show. This was maybe a few weeks ago. We talked with uh, Brandy Spain. How did you get into presentation design? Because that seems like a bit of an offshoot from when people think of traditional graphic design. Folks tend to lament doing any sort of PowerPoint presentations. Exactly. The thing about presentation design is everybody has Keynote. If you have a Mac, you have Keynote. If you have a PC, you have PowerPoint. So it's it's kind of like having Word. You know, It's something you have, and nobody really likes to work in it. I think I embraced presentation design kind of early on. When I was contracting for a few years, I basically became a presentation expert with uh, the agency I was working for. Basically, what that means is nobody else knows how to do PowerPoint, and you know how to do PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. So uh, I basically embraced it early on and found out I was kind of good at it. You know, it's a pretty translatable skill. If you know, you know, Photoshop, I'm a Photoshop guy. If you're able to do anything in Photoshop, you can always, you know, drag that stuff right into your presentation and make it look really good. So it's kind of a natural progression. And uh, I found out I was I was getting jobs that nobody else was getting because nobody else really wanted to do PowerPoint. And I just stuck with it. And uh, here I am a few years later doing it full time. Nice. And you've worked, like you said, for a lot of big brands. Is there like a recurring theme with these sort of clients about what they're looking for when it comes to presentation design? You know, I think so. Pretty much, you know, very clean, you know, a lot of a lot of effective animation, you know, pretty complex stuff, actually. I mean, you know, we again, we all know PowerPoint. We've all sat through some pretty hideous PowerPoints. Um, it's basically a few notches up from that. It's kind of like looking through maybe a company brochure and a slide deck. But uh, I think, you know, 
I guess the most recurring thing I, I see is, uh, you know, not a lot of con- actually not a lot of content on the slide. It's really an effective presentation usually has, you know, very little content, more just the hard hitting stuff and kind of leave all the other stuff, put that in your speaker notes. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much that's the theme. Nice and lean. So between PowerPoint and Keynote and Prezi, what are your thoughts on sort of the differences between these? Is there one that you prefer in particular? I am a Keynote fanatic. I love to use Keynote when I can. It's just a cleaner program. It's It, it makes everybody look <laughs> super polished. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, it's a simple program, simple interface, but it just the animations and things, it just everything's very smooth and, and well laid out. PowerPoint is a little bit more difficult. You have to kind of dig through the menus and, and kind of know what you're doing with the animations, and it's a little bit more complex and takes a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. So I guess PowerPoint's my second favorite, and uh, my third, I guess my least favorite, is Prezi. I think there's a place for Prezi, but it's just kind of a it's it's kind of weird to me. It's a, it's just kind of it's kind of a niche product, so you know I'll never turn down doing stuff for for Prezi, but I just don't quite get it. So. So with with sort of this clean design and and minimal content on slides, what are some other things that people can do to create more effective presentations? It's kind of rehashing, but really you gotta you gotta keep it clean. The essence of a presentation is you're, you're getting a ton of copy, and people are saying, "Hey, put this in the deck." You know, it's easy to take that copy, dump it straight into the slide, have a whole bunch of bullet points, and call it a day. You know, add a picture and call it a day. And I think that's what we're used to. Mm-hmm. But it's really, you know, distilling all those bullet points into, you know, maybe three key points. And again, moving all the extra stuff, you know, the extra stuff's important, but move that to your speaker notes and really just find a really interesting way to distill those three points, you know, in a graphic way. You know, so if you have three really important things, maybe put those in three boxes and have those boxes animated in. It's a pretty simple thing, but I mean, just instead of bullet points, you got to find another way to do it and make it a little bit more interesting. So that's always the key. I mean, you kind of have to find an, a really interesting way to take, oftentimes the information is not really interesting, you know, not really compelling, but you have to make it interesting. Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of, and you know, I, I think all designers, like pretty much everybody listening to this podcast, you know, knows how to, <laughs> that's the challenge. You got to take something that may be not interesting to you or maybe even to the masses and you have to make it interesting. So that's what I have to do that every day in uh, presentation design. Where do you see the future of presentation design going? That's an interesting question. I know there are, you know, it seems like there are programs coming out every few months, you know, trying to take over the PowerPoint crown. I don't know. I think PowerPoint and and Keynote are here to stay, but I think people are going to find different ways to, um, you know, different ways to, well, actually, you know, as a matter of fact, PowerPoint just came out for the, um, the iPad. So, you know, and it's pretty robust. I mean, I used it. It's pretty great. So you, you know, designing on the fly, you know, designing on your tablet, designing on your phone, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to come out with something really interesting in the next few years and, you know, clunky laptop, you don't even need it. And, you know, has all the features you had before, maybe even more. Who knows? It might be a hologram, you know, <laughs> Who knows? So, you know we're in the future now. So, you know, right. I, I can't even call it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is HBCU month here on Revision Path. And I know that you are an HBCU graduate. Can you tell the people where you graduated from? I went to the uh, real HU, which is Hampton University. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Howard. Howard people still have love for you. Yeah, I went to beautiful Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia. Did you always want to attend an HBCU? Well, my, both my parents went to Hampton, and, you know, actually several of my family members went to Hampton, so I kind of was predestined to go. Uh-huh. But, you know, I, when I graduated high school, I wasn't, you know, in a rush to go to Hampton. I was, you know, I'm from Maryland originally, uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, and I was just kind of, you know, like, oh, I'll just go to University of Maryland or, you know, something local, and my parents weren't having that. So, <laughs> so it was kind of almost like a legacy type decision. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I, I really I'm really glad I went. I, I don't think I would have turned out the way I did if I if I had just uh, kind of settled and gone to a local college. Just the experience I got uh, at Hampton was is, was invaluable. Not even just the learning, but just being around, you know, so many, you know, people that look like me, you know, and mm-hmm. just learning things and, you know, from people from around the, you know, around the country and just seeing the you know different ways people dress and you know talk and you know it's just it was just so great you know just being around in that environment 
So there's something interesting that you mentioned there about, you know, kind of the good thing about going to an HBCU is seeing people that, that look like you. And I feel like one of the criticisms that people make about HBCUs is that going to one doesn't prepare you for the real world because the real world isn't, I guess, that same type of a inclusive environment. How was your time at Hampton, and how did that sort of help prepare you for the working world? That's a, that's a great point. I think you have to – they don't teach you that, you know, HBCU. You know, once you leave here, you're going to have to not be around people that look like us, and you're going to have to, you know, kind of learn to assimilate and, you know, and, and, right. and talk, you know, maybe talk a little bit different at the workplace. You know, they don't, they don't teach you that. And I don't know if everybody made that transition as well as I did. Uh-huh. You know, it's easy to, to almost be maybe a little militant, you know, or maybe militant's not the right right word, but you know, I'm, I was listening to X Clan and all that stuff, you know, <laughs> brand new year and stuff. Right, you know, right. And then you, you know, according to the work world, you can't be like, you know, peace God, you know, you can't. Right, it can't be like a Dave Chappelle skit. It can't be like right, you know, right. keeping it real goes wrong. Like Wu Tang, you can't <laughs> right. can't do that in the boardroom. Can't it does do that. Not quite work. I tried. <laughs> No, no. I don't know. I, just to be frank, I mean, in high school, you know, my high school was, it wasn't maybe 50-50, but I would say it wasn't, you know, the African-Americans were definitely a minority. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I had a lot of, I had a lot of, you know, white friends at, at, uh, in high school. And that, and that's why I think, you know, HBCU was so good for me is because, you know, I was, you know, around a lot of white people in, in, in uh, high school and then going to college. It's just like, oh, my God, it's so much blackness. This is so great. You know, mm-hmm. I just wasn't around it like this. And then once you leave college, you have to, again, you have to kind of be able to be around everybody and, and just accept everybody. You can't, you know, give the shady eye at John in accounting, you know, right? Uh, because he doesn't look like you, you know. And I, I think it's just, hopefully it's just common sense. Again, I, I know some people didn't make that transition as well, and they probably learned the hard way that, you know, you, you just have to be able to, to kind of, <laughs> you know, accept everybody for who they are. Luckily, I, I think I did pretty well in that in that area. I don't think I'd be as successful as I am now if if I, you know, didn't accept people for who they were. Mm-hmm. What did you major in at Hampton? Uh, advertising and public relations. So, how did you go from advertising and PR to presentation design? What's that journey? It was a, a long, crazy, crazy journey. No, it wasn't crazy. I just <laughs> I was looking at my resume or just my work history the other day, and I just. I was always a, you know, one year, one year, one year, two years, you know, just, just, I kind of just jumped around. And Uh when I first started out, I, you know, it's like, how do you get a job in advertising? You know, what's the easiest way? And I ended up working at a newspaper, a local newspaper in their uh, classified advertising department. You know, it's, it's advertising, but really what it was, was just taking, uh, you know, calls over the phone and doing, you know, little, little place ads, you know, little, you know, lost puppy, right. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So it was like, Oh, you got to start somewhere. And just from there, I started working in agencies and started kind of getting my feet wet a little bit more. You know, at this point, I'm not even a graphic designer. I didn't go to school for graphic design, but just kind of, you know, I was a, an advertising, what do you call it? An account person. An, uh, like an account manager or something? Yeah, an account manager. Thank okay. you. It's been so long. So, you know, and I, I did that for, for a few years at a few agencies and it just wasn't, wasn't what I wanted to do. And I, you know, I really wanted to make commercials. So when I went, you know, I was like advertising commercials. I'd love to do commercials and you know, I was like, there's got to be some kind of way for me to, you know, get into that, that arena. So long story short, you know, I just, at these agencies, I kind of, uh, you know, you're, you're around these designers there. And I used to kind of want to start making changes on the ads when they went to lunch. I'm like, I need this ad for this client. I'm going to go in and Photoshop or Quark back in the day. It was Quark and, you know, make these changes and kind of, you know, I was like, oh, this is, this is, I can do this. You know, I can do, you know, I could change the text. You know, Mm -hmm. and uh, long story short, I just kind of uh, kept plugging away and, you know, started messing around in Photoshop and just, you know, snowball, snowball and full fledged graphic designer. And then the presentation design kind of, like I said, kind of came out of nowhere where, you know, I knew knew PowerPoint enough to to be dangerous and just kind of use my Photoshop and skills and illustrator skills and just kind of rolled them into that. and, And here I am. So it sounds like you really just, you, you paid your dues, essentially, because you were saying you didn't major in design, but you sort of went into it. Like, that's sort of where your career went. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I am self-taught. I'm 100% self-taught. And, you know, I, I don't toot my horn too much, man, but I'm, I'm, that's one of the things I'm really proud of is, you know, I just, I literally learned the things I wanted to learn. And I'm still learning now. I mean, 
but we have the internet. I mean, there's just no reason you can't learn. You know, if you want to do After Effects, you want to do, you know, motion design, you can get on the internet and just learn it. It's just, there's just no reason, man. So I am a product of the internet. You know, I don't, I, if I grew up in the 60s, there's no way I would have been where I am now, man. It's just, you know, it's the information is out there and it's so easy to get. And there's just no reason you can't, you know, learn, take up a new skill and six months be doing it, you know. So, right. That's where I am right now. Yeah. Are, are there any resources in particular that you like? You know, one of the most valuable things I did was, well, I used to go to Photoshop World every okay. year. And so National Association of Photoshop Professionals. Ah, um, okay. I so NAP. Yeah. yeah, I joined NAP, and, um, and I used to do the tutorials. It would be just, you know, really detailed tutorials. I mean, you see the finished product, and step-by-step step they show you how to do the thing. And mm-hmm. it's, it's there's just... There's just no way you can't do it. It's, it just shows you how to do it, you know, in a really easy way. And, you know, I just to blow people away, it was like, look at this text I made that looks like ice, you know. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Somehow I've never used that in actual uh, in actual design, but it was cool at the time, you know. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, you know, just a uh, nap was is the biggest thing I did to learn. And just going to, you know, Atlanta or Vegas or something and uh, around a whole bunch of people, be around a whole bunch of people that, you know, love Photoshop the way I do and just have the, the excitement for it. That was huge for me. So I, I always give NAP a shout out uh, when I can. What sparked that, I guess, sort of mid-career change that you had? Because it sounds like you said you went to school for advertising and PR and you were mm-hmm. doing good. What sort of click that made you want to switch to doing presentation design? I think it was just it was just my situation. You know, I got laid off in 2008. Uh-huh. You know, I think... I think most people have maybe not, maybe not most people, but you know if you've experienced a experienced a layoff and you know you have some idle time and you're not a uh, you're not quite getting the jobs or the work you want, you kind of get maybe not desperate, but you just have to you're just sitting there like what can I do? Yeah. So you know again I, I was contracting or you know temping you know even the less glamorous way to look at it, and you don't make great money when you temp. I was getting work, but it's just not just a lot of sitting around. Yeah. And again, you know, I, th- I think, I think maybe just a couple of times they sent me out for some PowerPoint work, and I could do it. And literally, just after those couple of times, you know, the client was really happy with me, and I was, you know, this agency's presentation expert. And just from there, then on, I was just like, I am a presentation expert. You know, it's like if you label yourself a certain way and you can back it up. Mm-hmm. You can be whatever you really want to, and I think that's kind of what happened with me. So literally, I mean, I'm you know I'm a presentation designer, and you know I'm still learning. I'm just I, you just learn on the job. It's kind of you're almost like not faking it as you go along. But if you're a presentation designer, it doesn't mean you're the best presentation designer in the world. You just have to learn and, and prove to people you're you're the best at what you do, and mm-hmm. that's kind of where I am now. And I, I'm still all these years later still learning. You know techniques and and things from other people and and advanced techniques and things like that so yeah yeah that's kind of how it came about okay who are some of your mentors or did you have anyone that sort of really helped you out during this whole time uh not really i kind of went about this solo i can definitely give a shout out to my wife that dealt with me when i was sitting through those periods where (laughs) i was sitting around not working uh she was my mentor to get off my butt and and get out there and, and do something but no, I would say, you know, Nancy Duarte, if you're not familiar with her work, you should definitely check her out. I mean, she is kind of, you know, the, the godmother of, of presentation design. I mean, it's just, it can be the truth. You know, Duarte did the graphics. If you've seen that movie, they, they did the the, uh, the graphics for that movie. Okay. Um, they work with every client. I mean, app, anybody you can think of, Apple, you know, Google, everybody, that's their client. And she talks to Ted you know, actually, Duarte does a lot of graphics for Ted. I mean, it's she's just the person you'd want to you know follow. I have two of her books, and this is why I was working there. I mean, I'm working for, I'm working at you know the, the place. I'm working for the person that's basically the godmother of presentation design, which is which is pretty great. And you know, her books resonate, and you should definitely check them out. I mean, even if you're just a graphic designer, if you're it's it's she just basically tells you how to distill information into a story format and you know basically get your point across in a really interesting way so i would say you know in the beginning i wouldn't say she was my my mentor but you know now that i'm you know mid career doing this i mean most definitely she's my mentor you know she may not know it but she is okay <laughs> 
Is there anyone that you're mentoring? No, no. But I'm. The funny thing is, I tell everybody I know. You know, uh, designers that that maybe aren't you know right where they want to be in their career. I'm just like, presentation design is where it's at. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, you already have Photoshop. You, I mean, you already have a keynote. You already have PowerPoint. You have Photoshop. I'm telling you, you know, check out some of you know Nancy's books. I'm happy to help you out. You know, get into it. And I don't think anybody really goes for it. They're like, okay, well, you know, that's all right. And I've offered to mentor people, and 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 I just don't, I just don't think people are interested. And I can understand that, but I, I mean, I'm just telling you, it's it's like it's the next, maybe not the next big thing, but. I get too much work. I get too many. I have to turn work down as a presentation designer. I mean, I just, it's, there's so much work out there. So if you're listening and you're kind of in, you know, in, at a point in your career where you, you, you need a little change or you need a little extra money, I, I would encourage you to, to really just brush up on your, your PowerPoint, your, your keynote skills, or even feel free to reach out to me. I can help you. I can, I can show you some resources, but it's a really good way to, to go. So, so you say that people are turning you down. Is it for the mentorship, or is it because they just don't think presentation design is, is I guess, a sexy kind of career? Because I think when when people think about you know design, especially you know with the way the current economy is with design and technology, they're thinking apps, they're thinking Silicon Valley, they're thinking like the big you know pie in the sky venture capital funding sort of thing. But if you're getting so much work that you have to turn it away, that's a good problem to have. It's a great problem. I mean, yeah, I've never had that problem when I was a designer, you know, just a present, you know, graphic designer, uh -huh. you know, and yeah, it's not sexy. Again, it's, you know, what's sexy about PowerPoint, you know, it's <laughs> what's sexy about Keynote, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, if, if you've ever been to a really large trade show or, you know, if you, if you're, you work for a kind of a large company and you have an annual meeting and, you know, you're, you're sitting in an auditorium with 500 to 1,000 people and you're looking at, at a presentation, I'm doing that. You know, that I'm, my work is being seen by, you know, hundreds or if not thousands of people. And again, these are not your run of the mill, you know, bullet point PowerPoints. I mean, these are, you know, complex animation kind of things. When I first moved to the Bay Area, I, you know, I pretty maybe in the first six months I worked there, I started working for Facebook just okay. out of the blue, just out of the blue. I mean, uh -huh. I went on Craigslist and found an ad, you know, like, oh, wow. Yeah. Of Craigslist. Right. <laughs> um, because presentation design, like nobody, nobody's really doing it. So again, I stand out. I stand out big time. I mean, I you know, if it was just like graphic designer wanted, there'd be a million resumes, there'd be a million people, and they would just select some money. You know, I just happened to answer this ad at the right time, meet this guy in the coffee shop. He liked me. I started working at Facebook. You know, just like that. I mean, wow. I stand out because of what I do. So you know, working at Facebook, you know. These people doing stuff for sales meetings for for large. They have an FA conference they do every year in, mm -hmm. in uh, San Francisco. I'm doing presentations for that, and my work is being seen by all these people. You know, people are taking a picture of Mark Zuckerberg, and there's a screen behind them. You know, like that's my screen. You know, I did, <laughs> I did that. You know, it's like so. It's may, it may not be sexy. It's not like my name's on it or anything like that. But at the end of the day, my stuff is being seen. It's you paying know, the bills, right? It's definitely yeah. It's paying the bills, and, and it's uh, you know, now I work at uh, I work at Skype. You know, it's like Skype slash Microsoft. Uh, okay. Most people don't know Skype is owned by Microsoft, but I work there now, and you know, I I see my work all the time. You know, I'm you know something in TechCrunch, or I'm like, oh yeah, that's the, <laughs> I think I I think I worked on that that deck, or you know something like that. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's again, it's it doesn't sound sexy, and I can't really convey that to people when I when I'm trying to mentor them or explain it to them. But um, it's just a valuable thing to have in your portfolio, even if you don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Just have it as a as a backup or or just a, an addition to your skill set. I would say I don't want too many people to get into it because you know <laughs> I, I want to still stand out, right? You know? <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But you know, you know who you are if you uh, you want to get into it. I think I think it's a good place to go, definitely. So, did you do work for some of the presentations at this year's F eight? I didn't. I didn't. You know, now that I'm, I'm full time at uh, at Skype, I uh, I can't really you know work uh, do any side work anymore. So, yeah, I didn't do anything this year. I got you. So, how do you keep motivated and inspired? Because, like you said, you know, presentation design isn't really like a a super, you know, kind of sexy sort of thing. But in another vein, the work that you do is seen by so many people, they just don't necessarily know that it's you. 
Huh, interesting. Uh, you know, I I think I got over it a long time ago, you know. I, I think even, you know, just being a any kind of designer, you know, a coder, again, you know, your audience for this podcast, and, you know, I, I think n- none of us really are seen, you know, none of us, you don't, you can't sign your work, you know, you can't, there's nothing you can really do for, for people to know, you know, who you are, who did that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of got over that a long time ago. It's a kind of a thankless job being des- a designer or a coder. And I, I stay inspired, I guess, or, or inspired, or I get my inspiration just from, just from things around me. I mean, you could look at a, a really cool ad in a magazine or a website and, and just kind of put that into a presentation i mean just that style quite often what i have to do is you know a company may not have a, a template a powerpoint template at all but they have a company brochure or a corporate brochure and what i do is i basically just kind of emulate their corporate brochure and you know in a powerpoint template and and just kind of you know just kind of do that so i think all of us kind of find inspiration from you know our environment things we see that are just you know just look cool i think you have to be good at emulating things and and find inspiration from things to, to kind of stay fresh and and relevant it's easy to kind of stay stuck and put that drop shadow on on the, you know you've been putting that same drop shadow you've been putting on your your stuff right. uh, since 19 you know 1995 you just kind of got to stay relevant and find your inspiration you know in places that are in good places around you you know so aside from, I guess, that whole clean, minimalist look, are there any, I guess, prevalent design styles or trends right now that are big with presentation design? Yeah, I guess one of the ones I don't get to do it too often. It's it's a slightly complicated, but um, it would be more like a seamless presentation design. In, in other words, where you're on a slide and you the slide may advance, to, you know, it might slide to the right and then keep sliding to the right, you know, on each click. But it's actually kind of revealing. It, it's 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 kind of moving along a path. If mm-hmm. that makes any sense. So it's kind of, uh, you know, it might it might transition up or down and kind of move along a path. And it, it's kind of like instead of just a slide, it's actually like moving along a, a picture or something like that. I got. It. And I think that's just not really that's not really a new trend or anything. But that's uh that's something I see from time to time. It's kind of cool. Just you got to think outside the box. I mean, that's one of the cool. Again. By people that do print out there or web, I think web's a little bit more you know interesting. But print, I mean, print is what you see is what you get. With presentation design, you, you can actually move. You know, it's not in, not necessarily in a three D space, mm-hmm. although you can. I mean, there's some cool stuff you can do as far as embedding movies and things like that. If you have some three D experience or have a designer that does three D, you can embed all that in your your PowerPoint and and kind of actually move in three D space and you know move left and right and up and down and, and do things like that it's and that's kind of one of the cool things about it you know if you have the vision for it and you can actually think a little bit outside the box you can do some pretty cool stuff i know for for different tech presenters like if people are talking about css or javascript or something like that i see a lot of presentations where people have code that's within the presentation so they're trying to like execute code while the presentation is going and while i think that looks cool i feel like that always sort of breaks the flow of what the presentation is because you know first of all you're coding in front of an audience which i think would put anyone a little bit on edge but (laughs) you know just trying to make sure that it's cohesive and seamless like you're talking about i feel like that's something that would would maybe kind of throw people off yeah um i actually haven't seen what you're talking about and thank god i don't have to do that because i <laughs> yeah i would break something <laughs> luckily my css days are over man i yeah I, but yeah i that's one thing you do have to be mindful of even though i haven't seen that i'm, I'm kind of sure i know what you're talking about even if you're talking to a bunch of coders or a bunch of uh, engineers or something people get bored man people tune out and you you have to find a way to stay engaging to your audience. So I suppose live coding would probably be kind of cool for an engineer. You know, they're following along, but you you have to you have to be mindful of your audience and um, just you know find a way to connect. You know, right. and again, if you if you're coding and you break something up there, you know, it's, it looks kind of bad. So you you know you got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you weren't doing presentation design, what would you be doing? Do you think you'd still be in advertising and PR? definitely be doing i i think i'd probably be doing print i always enjoyed print you know like i said i really love photoshop and i'm i'd probably be working for a magazine or i don't know i don't know i I think i'd i tried web for a while i did you know like i said i did uh you know css and 
and a little flash and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. it just, you know, wasn't my thing. And I think you realize when something may, you know, you can't force it. Again, I'm self-taught, so I tried to teach myself some of these things, and it just didn't work out. I just, mm. right. So yeah, I'd, I'd probably be doing something, something with Photoshop or Illustrator. Yeah, I feel like with with designers now, there's still this, I guess, argument about whether a designer should be specialized in something or if they should be, you know, kind of a jack of all trades where they know a little design, a little code, or things like that. It's rare that you really see people sort of niche down in design, but presentation design is one of those areas where you know, from what you're saying, you can really do that and, like, really make a career out of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will, again, um, you know, the D.C. area where I'm from, I don't know how big a need there is. I, I mean, I think people, you know, every company needs presentation work. You know, it may not be often uh, enough to hire a full-time designer, but, you know, everybody has, you know, meeting, corporate meetings and things like that. I moved out to the Bay Area looking through, when I lived here in, in D.C., I looked for jobs out there in presentation design to see, you know, is there a lot out there? And I couldn't believe how much work there was out there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have all these tech companies out there that, that you know, they're just you know, the startups. You know, they're, they're basically trying to get venture capital. And, you know, so they need really strong deck to show these people so they get money. Mm-hmm. And I, that's actually, I think, what most of the work I used to get was people trying to prove to people or trying to show people why they need this money you know i would this is my product this is you know this is the what it can do you know this is why your money will help my company you, you understand what i'm trying to say hopefully. yeah yeah i got it yeah <laughs> so if you think about it you know it's definitely a career especially in the bay area where or any tech rich or industry rich place that would you know that would need presentation work i think you could definitely make a pretty pretty big career a pretty lucrative career too because again you're you're not there's no competition you know mm-hmm. it's there's nobody a, you, i'm pretty much a unicorn so it's like mm-hmm. a, it's it's a different pay scale almost so it's it's um i definitely encourage people to, to look into it it's it's a uh, it's pretty great so one thing and i don't know if you've seen the well let me ask this have you seen the cnn black in america four series where they talked about kind of african-americans in silicon valley trying to make it did you see that I don't think I did, actually. So so there was this <laughs> CNN special. I don't know if they are still doing the special because Soledad O'Brien doesn't work there anymore, but she would do this Black in America series, and each mm-hmm. installment would be about a different facet of African-American life you know, here in the States. And Black in America 4 specifically talked about black people trying to make inroads in Silicon Valley, and it focused on... The New Me Accelerator, which is the work that Angela Benton is doing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that talk was around, you know, building an app, getting venture capital, doing your pitch and things like that. And I feel like from there it sort of sparked this movement for African-Americans to start to want to learn how to code and, and get into doing all of this. I don't know how successful that has been in terms of an overall movement. I guess the way that, the where I'm trying to, guide this i should say is you know as a black guy in silicon valley has your race hampered your progress in any sort of way has it been a problem it doesn't sound like it has been no i don't think it has been a problem you know i don't feel like i'm necessarily you know not getting work because of my race uh-huh. uh, you know uh, again I, I you know i moved out there my story is kind of interesting. I'm, I'm going to be brief because I want to answer your question. But I moved to California with no job. I moved out there. My, my wife stayed here. I moved out there and lived in hotels to try to kind of see if I could get something. And if it didn't work out, I was going to move back home. And, I, yeah, I mean, literally, just, yeah, it was it was bad. <laughs> I got, you know, I got, a, I got a job kind of right away when I was out there. And, you know, it was pretty easy. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, it's, it's going pretty good. And, again, you know, I never – Nothing was ever really difficult. And I don't know if it was because, again, because of what I did. Actually, that's not even true. It wasn't even the, the, my first job out there was just a design job. It wasn't even, it wasn't presentation design. Uh, yeah, I, it was It was really easy. I don't feel like I get any, you know, shade or anything at work or, mm-hmm. but I will say, you know, to that point, there are not, there are just not a lot of African Americans in tech. I mean, I don't see that many, you know, in my building, there might be, I think there might be, I don't know, maybe five to five or seven Mm -hmm. people that look like me there. And, you know, out of, I don't know, maybe 500, uh, maybe, or maybe, maybe three, three or 400. But yeah, I mean, 
you know, again, I again talking to the listeners, I'm sure you know what I'm going through because, you know, everywhere I've worked, I've always been either the black guy or one of the few black guys. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, Silicon Valley, I don't feel like it's any different. I wish I knew why this was the case. I mean, it's just, I don't understand why there's not more people in this industry. You know, we're smart people and I know we could do it. I just, I just don't know where we are, you know? I think we're out there. I certainly think we're out there. And of course, this podcast, I sort of hate to be sort of braggy in a way, but I mean, that's sort of what this podcast is doing. Like we're, we want to talk to the people that are out there that are working because, you know, sort of like you're saying, you don't see us out here. And I would wager that, you know, the average designer or developer, you know, probably doesn't see a lot of black designers or black developers out there. And so I really want Revision Path to sort of shine a light on those people, sort of like those unsung heroes in a way that are out there that are doing the work so we can learn about who they are, what they're doing, what their stories are. Because there's, I mean, there's a lot of us out there. There's a lot of us. Yeah, I agree. I know we're out there. And I, you know, I, I think that's what what's so great about Revision Path is, you know, I'm just like, oh, that guy, <laughs> that guy's doing exactly what I'm doing, you know? And right. I know he's dealing with the same challenges I'm doing, but, you know, I, I think what it is, it's just, you're just not seeing, it's not 50-50, you know? It's not like every other person looks like me, mm-hmm. you know? It's a, I'm the only one on my team that looks like, looks like me, uh, you know, just... Yeah, I think there's, uh, in my whole floor, I think there's only one other person, you know? So it's just, i just like to see more, you know? I just, it, you know, I'm, I'm in my 40s now. I'm, I would have thought things would have changed by now, and I just don't see it. So I don't know if that's Silicon Valley or what, but, you know. I think it might be uh, just about, I think it just might be the optics of the situation. Like, you know, when, when there are kids that are coming up in their teens and their 20s, and they look to the design industry, you know, to try to find people that look like them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if they're like a black kid or something, it's going to be hard to find people that really look like them that are doing well, that are at a certain level that they want to, you know, strive towards. So maybe it's a point where they feel like this is not a viable option for them because they don't see themselves reflected in the industry. Absolutely. I, I totally can agree with that. And I think that kind of goes back to the your question about, you know, HBCU and the transition to the workforce. If you're used to that environment and you <laughs> you go to work for a company and nobody looks like you, you're just right. like, "Whoa, wait. <laughs> what? This is this is not cool. Like I I can't do this, you know." Mm-hmm. And you know, I think that is I don't know how, you know, I don't know how that works for everyone. But it's got to be tough, you know, just just go into a it, just that transition period, um, just, you know, working in an environment where, you know, literally there's just no diversity at all. Let's switch gears a little bit here. Mm-hmm. What is it that you're excited about at the moment? It can be something work related. It can be something not work related. What are you excited about? I have to say my one year old daughter, my 15 month old daughter is just uh, that's just the most exciting thing to me, man. She's uh She's walking now and, uh, you know, just everything. And I just never knew. You know, you people always talk about their kids. And you see on Facebook, people are just like, oh, you know, post pictures. And like, oh, so-and-so. And I was just like, oh, that's cool. You know, before I had kids, I was like, why, why do people post so many pictures of their kids? Like, I don't get it. You right, know, right. like, I don't care. Now I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it, man. It's just the best thing I've ever done. Just I have a lovely wife and uh, my baby is just uh, just my heart right now, man. So that's that is basically now I really have a reason to work and get out there and grind and do things uh, just for her, man. She's the best best thing ever to happen to me, no doubt. Hands that's down. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. What do you like to do outside of uh, presentation design, outside of work? Pretty nerdy type things, like you know, I I was. When I had sent my bio into you, I was like, how do I make myself sound interesting? I, <laughs> I, I, I like to watch TV. No, I like to watch TV and play video games and, you know, just t- typical 14-year-old, you know, stuff than a 40-year-old man body type stuff I do. I just like taking it easy, man. You know, listening to music, reading, pretty calm stuff. Okay. Anything uh, good you're reading at the moment? I am trying to... <laughs> I'm trying to get through these uh, Game of Thrones books, man. Ah. I, uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm... I've watched the series pretty heavily, and I'm only on book two, so you know I'm way past in the series where I'm in the book. So it's just kind of weird. It's so it's uh, the incentive to get through the book is is kind of there, and I'm just like so far past it. It's just it's just tough to kind of get in there and, and read it. But uh, well, I hear that the the show is now deviating 
a bit from the books. That's what I heard. It is. It, it's actually very crazy because there's stuff that's still, you know, this is only book two. And I think there's right now there's five books. And there's just so much stuff that hasn't happened in the books, but there's stuff that has. So it's like they're just kind of they're just kind of messing with the universe all together in the book. Uh-huh. Kind of like The Walking Dead. Watch the show and read the, the comic books. They're totally different. Yeah. So it's it's just weird. So I, I I guess I have to separate myself from the TV show and the book, but it's just it's a little tough. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying though, <laughs> <laughs> really trying. What advice would you give to someone that is just starting out? Let's say, for example, someone that wants to start in doing presentation design. What advice would you give them? I would say emulation again. I think I think that's just you know what's really helped me. Um, maybe just take something like I said, you know, maybe a, a, a magazine ad or something. Um, if you have some you know Photoshop skills, try to try to emulate something you see in a magazine or an ad or something on a slide, and you know break all your elements apart, and then try to maybe animate those things in, and and just see if you could do it. You know, just see see you know kind of see what 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 kind of uh, things you can do with that. And just practice, you know, just practice and, and, you know, set your presentation up, you know, as a presentation, do some different slides. Oh, also, even even just take like some data or, or, or something from your job or something you worked on before and make that into a slide uh, or make that into a deck and, and and just practice and, you know, let let your employer or let, you know, let your agency or on your resume put that you, you know, presentation design or you're a, you know, PowerPoint and Keynote. Mm-hmm. And just put that out there, you know, that you, you've, you know, you know this. And if you know it, if you know it well enough, you know, if you've done that practice where you've done some of these exercises, get out there and just start and just start doing it. Check out presentationzen.com. They have a lot of uh, nice presentations up there. You can kind of see a slide share is another one. Just check out and see what other people have done and just try to emulate that emulation, man. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not copying. You know, you're just basically getting inspiration and, you know, you learn by, by doing. You learn by, you know, making your work look look like that, you know. Put your own spin on it. Right. Practice um, makes perfect, basically. Practice makes perfect, exactly. exactly. Where, where do you see yourself in the next five years or so? The next five years or so? I don't know. You know, I, I want to stay at Microsoft. It's a great company. It's going in a great direction. They have a new CEO. Also a man of color, which is pretty, pretty great. Nice. Yeah, it is. You know, I don't know. I I don't think I'll be doing presentation design full time. I kind of want to move into something else. It's a great company for that to, you know, if you want to do something and you, you see an opportunity, you can kind of jump into that role. So I don't know. I, I want to just stay there and, and keep growing. I, hopefully, maybe I'll be CEO in, in, in 20 years or something. I don't know. Maybe you'll see me then. Hey, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So just to wrap things up, where can our listeners find you online? You can find me at uh, presentationguy.com. That's my personal site. You can find me on Twitter, which is at Big Simmons. And you can find me on Facebook. And my name is uh, Joel, J-O-L-E. I have a very interesting spelling. And last name Simmons. And, uh, yeah, just, just find me there. Sounds good. Joel Simmons, thanks again so much for taking time out of your vacation this is your vacation <laughs> to do this interview man this was really good i really appreciate it yeah thanks maurice this has been great man i uh, really enjoy your site man and i'm proud to be part of these uh, great interviews you're doing man keep up the good work thank you thank you all right thanks a lot man all right and that's it for this week big thanks to joel simmons and thanks to you for listening If you're interested in learning more about presentation design, I'm telling you, Joel is definitely the guy to talk with. Don't forget about our sponsors, MailChimp and Audible. Sign up for a free account at MailChimp.com and start your own email marketing campaigns. It's really great for small businesses and it's super user-friendly. Also, don't forget about Audible. Just go to AudibleTrial.com forward slash revision path and sign up for a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial. Each of those signups really helps out revision path. So if it's not for you, then, you know, pass it along to a friend. Let them, you know, reap the benefits of it. We're not going to be mad at that at all. Also, don't forget about our giveaway. There's a link to it in the show notes. That giveaway is going to end on Friday. We will be announcing the winners on Friday. So if you haven't entered by Friday, you will miss out. So don't forget about that. Revision Path is a 318 media project. If you like what we're doing, you can sponsor us. Visit revisionpath.com donate and show your support. 
Sign up at our $5 a month level and get special access to a members only newsletter with behind the scenes information, early podcast releases, and a lot more. Thanks again so much for listening and we'll see you next time.